any financial advisor will tell you that to do well in the long term, you need to diversify so that when one stock is having a bad year, chances are you can make up the differences with gains in another. In a paper featured on the cover of Nature this week, scientists have shown that the same dynamic also holds true for fisheries management. By analyzing more than five decades of sockeye salmon abundance data, the researchers found that the dozens of different populations in Bristol Bay, Alaska, act like a diversified portfolio of investments, buffering the fishery as a whole against the ups and downs of any particular stock. Ecologists have for a long time appreciated and have had vague notions that diversity provides stability to ecosystems. Despite this, there are very few examples where we can provide quantitative estimates of how to translate this diversity into sustainability that matters to people. Our paper provides arguably the first concrete example that shows how diversity translates into the reliability to the fishermen. And we estimate that under current conditions, where there is all of this diversity in the system and returns are fairly reliable from year to year, the fisheries managers have to shut down the commercial fishery maybe every 25 to 40 years. We estimate that if you eliminate all the diversity in the system, so that it's operating as though it's one uniform population, you probably have to close the fishery um, every two to three years. Diversity in salmon populations comes about because they're finely tuned to their habitat. Some spawn in streams, others on the beaches along the shores of large lakes. They vary widely in things like body size, when they migrate to the ocean, and how long they stay there before they return to spawn. Each population experiences its own natural boom and bust cycles based on environmental conditions and pure chance. Like the stock market, you don't chase the, hot, the hottest stocks. You don't put all your money in the stock that's been rising for the last two years. You maintain a broad portfolio because the stock that is doing well, whether it's a stock in the stock market or a stock in a salmon stream, is likely not going to be the stock that's doing well in five or ten years. If we pretend that the pieces of habitat and the populations that are strong now will be strong in the future, we're setting ourselves up for a, for a big disaster. Unfortunately, many of our current management practices do assume that current productivity is a good indication of future productivity. In particular, a heavy reliance on hatchery production and intensive habitat modification for flood control actively reduce population diversity in salmon. As a result, Rivers like the Sacramento in California and the Columbia in Washington suffer intense swings in overall returns and increasingly frequent fisheries closures. In British Columbia, major salmon rivers like the Skeena and the Fraser show symptoms of decreased portfolio performance and increased vulnerability. This is of particular concern because the authors call population diversity insurance against the unexpected, and this covers everything from oil spills to climate change. The more diverse the portfolio of life histories we have, the more likely it is that one of them will do well in whatever uh, world we end up in. But these lessons apply not just to salmon and not just to sockeye and not just to Bristol Bay. They really apply to all fisheries, and uh, whether marine or freshwater. And the lesson is that maintaining the diversity buffers you to, from variability and the sustainability of fishing communities depends upon a diverse portfolio of fishing opportunities that need to be maintained. For Compass, I'm Liz Neely.